Right, hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Skyrim. In case you'd forgotten, we are currently in Iverstead, we're in the, uh, what is it, Villamire Inn? Relaxing by the fire, it's about 7 o'clock in the morning, early start. I think you should Eating breakfast, remember, remember, actually remember to eat breakfast this time. Lily is still with us, and uh, we're getting ready to make our climb up. The uh, the seven thousand steps or whatever how many it was that Khajiit said like seven thousand like six thousand nine hundred and whatever. <laughs> um, I would have a look at that conspiracy of the seven thousand steps. No, it doesn't say anything other than count the steps. Is it just like a joke quest? <laughs> like, anyway, I'm certainly not going to be counting the steps. I'm just. Uh, making that pretty clear right now. So anyway, yeah, we are going to ascend up the mountain, up the steps to the Monastery of Hyrothgar, where hopefully we're going to find some answers from the Greybeards about what exactly it means to be Dragonborn, and what being Dragonborn actually entails. Of course, Glorious has heard of the term Dragonborn before. The old Septim Emperors were Dragonborn, as well as the Raymond Emperors. They were Dragonborn as well. And, uh... However, he doesn't recall any of them being able to do this. So... It's, uh... It's a curious, curious situation. And uh, he's got plenty of questions, and that's hopefully what he's going to gonna do gonna go and find some answers as we climb up this gigantic mountain and it is a gigantic mountain it's bloody huge it's uh absolutely dwarfs red mountain in Morrowind uh, it really does in terms of lore I mean I, I I know red mountain's supposedly supposed to be taller than uh, the throat of the world according to some of the the pocket guys to the Empire anyway that might have Bethesda might have retconned that actually, but uh, it used to be the case that Red Mountain was supposed to be the tallest, but uh, I don't know if that's the case anymore. But obviously Red Mountain is nowhere near tall than that actually in the game, so... Not today. I'm just not ready to make the climb to High Hrothgar. The path isn't safe. Aren't the Greybeards expecting some supplies? Honestly, I'm not certain. I've yet to be allowed into the monastery. Perhaps one day. Hello. Passing through on your way to High Hrothgar? About to make a delivery up there myself. Anything you can tell me about the place? I've been to the monastery many times, but I've never even laid eyes on one of the Greybeards. Not that I'd care to. Being masters of the Thum, they could kill you by uttering a single word. Well, not that they would. They seem peaceful, but I wouldn't want to provoke them. Okay. Interesting. So you make deliveries then? Mostly food supplies like dried fish and salted meats. You know, things that keep fresh for a long time. The Greybeards tend not to get out much, if you catch my meaning. And what do they give you back? I assume they pay you for it, or something. Well, it's kind of an understanding between us. I mean, it just wouldn't feel right to charge them for a bit of preserved food. You kidding? Trouble is, my legs aren't what they used to be, and climbing the 7,000 steps takes its toll. I have to pay an arm and a leg just to get a pie around here. Great, good grief. You give this all, all of them for free? Fine, whatever. They must respect the Greybeards a heck of a lot then, in that case. <laughs> um, I suppose I could bring it up there for you. I am headed that way, after all. Really? Well, that would be kind of you. Here. Take this bag of supplies. At the top of the steps, you'll see the offering chest. Just leave the bag inside, and you're done. Anything I should watch out for? Looks like a long climb. Well, there's the occasional wolf pack or stray, but that's all I've ever had to deal with. Shouldn't be a problem for the likes of you. Other than that, watch your footing. In these wintry conditions, the stairs can be treacherous. Lovely. Be careful up there. Do the best. Right, I got given a bag of supplies. I was tempted to actually. Yeah, I was tempted to actually give these to Lydia. I'd be like, oh, thank you for taking these up the mountain. I'd be like, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll see you later then. And then just plonk them on Lydia. But no, I don't think it'll let me because 
they're actually quest items or a quest item singular not plural basic grammar jingles get it together Oof. okay so I better get myself a little better equipped for this climb we're gonna be going on so what is this emblem one before the birth of men the dragons ruled all of Mundus their word was the voice and they spoke only for true needs for the voice could could blot out the sky and flood the land I'm not sure how I'm supposed to be able to read that it's too bl the text is too blurry for me to even begin to imagine what, what language that's supposed to be written in but uh, it looks like it might be Daedric just because some of those letters there look, remind me of the ones in Morrowind you used to find on the signs and stuff but anyway there we go apparently Claudius can read that so we'll just uh, we'll roll with it we'll not question it count bloody steps one two three four five no screw it sod that I hope you're counting Lydia I did tell you to ew Very nice. I need to install um, Dance of Death, you know, the Kill Moves mod. Actually, now I think about it, because I used to have that installed as well, but I didn't get it again when I reinstalled Skyrim. And I really should get it. Ugh. Only a few stray wolf packs, he says. First thing we encountered was a giant bloody spider. Oh dear. See, now I kind of wish I still had the cloud mod installed, because then we'd be able to go all the way up here and then sit above the clouds, but, uh, nah, it was still a bit too glitchy for my liking. Wasn't worth it. Out of my way, goat. Dragonborn coming through here. The views already lovely. Well, I gotta tell you, those distant trees, the ones in the rift, they look absolutely, absolutely astonishingly ugly, don't they? It's big, big orange blotches on the landscape. It's not nice at all. Oh dear. Oblivion had better looking distant trees than that. But that's not an exaggeration in the slightest, it just did. Emblem 2. Men were born and spread over the face of Mundus. The dragons presided over the crawling masses. Men were weak then, and had no voice. How did they communicate then? Sign language. Mm. Yeah, I guess it's not so bad the further you get up, but yeah, God, the distant terrain in this isn't... Oh. Well, you know, the distant terrain itself isn't so bad, it's just the distant blasted trees that I take issue with. How, am I, how cold is it? The air is biting cold. Oh, blast. Let's hope we make it all the way up without freezing to death. <sighs> Wonderful, our first ice wraith. I have not encountered an ice wraith yet in this playthrough. And I was kind of glad because I don't like ice wraiths at all. They're annoying as hell. That was always that's always such a daft looking animation that one, especially with the larger animals like that. Right, can I please search the ice pile now, game? Are you gonna let me do that? Apparently my E key isn't working. Help! I can't do anything other than kill things. Have I accidentally done something silly? Activate is E, yeah. What the balls? Let me let me let me activate stuff. Game, what the hell is you where the hell are you playing at now? For heaven's sake. 
Right, I figured out what the problem is, bizarrely. I, uh, I don't know what's specifically causing it, but... It's to do with these ice wraiths. The ice piles that are left behind by them. Right, right now, I just killed this ice wraith. Also, it's horrible freezing rain. It's actually disgustingly terrible weather. But anyway, like, as you can see right now, I can talk to Lydia, no problem. If I try and activate the ice pile, nothing happens. And now if I try to talk to Lydia after doing that, nothing happens. So yeah. Mental note. Let's get going then. Do not touch the ice piles. They break the game. Don't know why that is. I'm going to assume it's some sort of quirky little bug to do with immersive creatures or something. I d that's just my initial reaction to that. It must surely be something to do with that. It could be any no any number of things really, but... So as to say, let's just not touch the ice piles from now on. I think that's the easiest solution here. Uh, unless someone in the comments knows what the actual bug is. They probably do. People tend to know these sort of things. i found... Whoa! Now... I'm going to quick save again, and I'm going to hope that it's to do with the ice piles and not to do with any old corpse. No. With these, it's fine. Still here. So, right. Okay, gotcha. Right. Brilliant. Sorted. Just don't touch the ice piles, and we'll be fine. Ugh. Oh, God, I'm getting wet as well as freezing cold. This is actually super bad. Um, this is literally the worst weather I could possibly be having right now. Okay, it's freezing flipping cold. God, that's a nice view, but... It is freezing flipping cold, and I'm getting progressively more wet. Like, that actually is terrible. That is the worst possible circumstances we could get in, because, like, the wetter you get, the, the worse your exposure is going to get, and, oh, dear. Please turn to snow, please. Emblem 3. The fledgling spirits of men were strong in old times, unafraid to war with dragons and their voices. But the dragons only shouted them down and broke their hearts. I see. Who wrote these? Who put them there? It's a good question. I'm going to assume the Greybeards put them there, but uh... Oh. What's going on? What have you spotted? What are you after, Lydia? What are you chasing? I am damp. Oh, for heaven's sake. Oh, it's another of these. Fall away and stop breaking my game. Horrible things. Anyway. Come on, Lydia, let's go. There are ten emblems, I believe, in total. And we'll get a little bonus if we manage to read them all. But I think I always end up accidentally missing one of them. Because I've never managed to get the bonus at the end. Well, I think I did once, but I haven't ever done it since then. Go on, keep up, Lydia. We need to uh, keep moving so we can stay out of this horrible cold. Ugh. I am now 48% wet. At least my exposure is still plus five, strangely enough. The air is bone chilling. I don't know. I don't think Frostfall's bugged out again, but uh would be wrong. No, plus two. It's definitely going down. It's just going down remarkably slowly. It's probably because I've got full exposure protection on my armour and I've got this fairy cloak, so. I'm probably I'm probably more well equipped than I give myself credit for to deal with the uh the cold, although I'm really unamused with the fact that it is raining on a snowy mountain top. That makes no blasted sense whatsoever. But anyway, hello. Keep an eye out for wolves if you're headed up the path to High Rothgar. Wolves and ice wraiths and giant spiders as well, apparently. But uh, did you hear the greybeards call Dovikin, or whatever it is they called? I'm not sure I quite caught it. <laughs> I was just outside Iverstead when it happened. It's an exciting moment. Nothing like this has happened in centuries. Really? 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 Great. Uh, it makes even less sense uh, than usual. Who Who are you? Just a pilgrim. 
I'd prefer to leave it at that, if you don't mind. <laughs> Fine then. God. It's only an honest question. What are you doing? Walking the steps. Meditating on the emblems. I make this trip every few years. I see. I. Emblem 4. Kine called on Parthenax, who pitied man. Together they taught men to use the voice. Then the dragon war rage. Dragon against tongue. Hmm. And references to Kine. I don't know whether Claudius would have really heard of the old Nord gods like Kine and Orki and uh, that kind of thing. It's an interesting evolution in Nordic culture, if you like, between, well, The Elder Scrolls Three Morrowind and Skyrim here. I'm drenched. Oh, bloody wonderful. Um, it's an interesting evolution, if you like, because in Blood Moon, which was the expansion for Morrowind, it's heavily implied by all the Nord characters you meet, and I'm not just talking about the Skarl guys, because they're totally different. They're, 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 they're outside the whole Nordic thing to begin with, but most of the Nord characters you meet seem to give the impression that the Nord still very much worship the old gods, like Orki and Alduin and uh, Kine, instead of the new Imperial gods, but in, in Skyrim itself, when you actually play Skyrim, it's quite clear that they're all about the... Um, they're all about the new gods, the eight, you know, the eight or nine divines. Like they have temples of Mara and uh, Arche and stuff all over the place, don't they? So, and they all worship Talos. Whereas in in Blood Moon, it's heavily implied that they don't worship Talos. The Imperials worship Talos, but the the Nords are supposed to worship Shaw instead. But uh, there you go. I guess a lot can change in two hundred years. That's the way I'm looking at it. I know there's a troll around here somewhere, I just don't see him. Oh, he's over there for some reason. He's usually over there, isn't he? How at him, Lydia? Ah. Damn it, wrong weapon. I really need to remap this Dwarven Broadsword to something, don't I? One. There we go. I seem to be using this more often anyway. Well, that's a bit of a moot point, because once again, Lydia has done my job for me. It's my exposure like, oh, minus 29 already. This is not good. We need to get a move on. Hopefully the Greybeards will let us in and we can warm up. Right, etch tablet. Man prevailed. Emblem 5. <clears throat> anyway, man prevailed. Shouting Alduin out of the world, proving for all that their voice was too strong. Wait, well, their voice too was strong, although their sacrifices were many fold. Mm. Goodness gracious me. I'm liking the footprints though, I have noticed them. They look particularly cool up on all this blank snow, but anyway. Uh. Stop raining! It's too high up for rain! I guess you haven't encountered any more horrible wildlife, but uh, let's see. Emblem 6! With roaring tongues, the Sky Children conquer, found in the first empire with sword and voice, whilst the dragons withdrew from this world. Mm -hmm. I still don't know what those are. Is it a poem or some kind of song? I don't know. Ugh, my vision's starting to blur now. We're, uh, we're getting a bit. It's getting a bit desperate here, really. I should have just turned back the minute it started raining, shouldn't I? That would have been the sensible thing to do. Emblem 7. The tongues at Red Mountain went away humbled. Jürgen Windcaller began his seven-year meditation to understand how strong voices could fail. Hmm. I believe that battle at Red Mountain is when... It's either when they tried to 
conquer the Dark Elves and the Tribunal defeated them. The Nords, that is, at the Battle of Red Mountain. Because, well, you know, that tends to happen when you try to fight three living gods, but... Either that, or I think it's a Battle of Red Mountain, because there's been a few. I think it might have been a Battle of Red Mountain where they faced off against Akavir, actually. But, uh... Jurgen Windcaller chose silence and returned. The seventeen disputants could not shout him down. Jurgen the Calm built his home on the throat of the world. High Hrothgar, then, one assumes. It's an interesting story, that the uh, whole seventeen disputants. Basically, what supposedly happened is the seven, seventeen other great Nord tongues basically disagreed with Jurgen's assessment that they shouldn't use the voice. Um, for military means, and so they tried to basically shout him down, shout him to bits like Ulfric did Torik, and uh, Jürgen supposedly, for three days straight, swallowed their shouts and just kind of absorbed them. And uh, eventually they gave up and decided he was right because he was stronger. Yes, I'm freezing, I know. Edge tablet. Emblem 9. For years all silent, the Greybeard spoke one name. Tiber Septim. Stripling then was summoned to Hrothgar. They blessed him and named him Doverkeep. Oh boy. Tiber Septim, eh? It's quite a legacy to live up to, isn't it? Okay, that's got me a little nervous now. I still don't recall Tiber Septim shouting about the place, really. That wasn't his thing, was it? Still completed count the steps. Oh. Oh, so you were counting for me, Lydia. Thank you. <laughs> Read Edge Tablet. Emblem 10. The voice is worship. Follow the inner path. Speak only in true need. Voice of the sky added. What does that do? Actually managed to get all the emblems this time. You're off. Minus 50% health, magic and stamina regeneration. Minus 30 archery, one handed, two handed. Oh, we're in a terrible state. Uh, voice of the sky. Animals will neither attack nor flee from you. Oh, that's nice. Uh, exposure minus 72. <laughs> it's not good. Uh, Lydia, you're going to be fine out here. I'm not sure if you're allowed in, frankly. Uh, yeah, you know what, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll invite you in in a bit. Besides, you're in Nord. It's not as if you even care. This is probably normal for you. Wait here. As you wish, my thing. Right, I'll see you in a minute. Oh, God. Taking this cloak off, it's sodden. Soaking wet. Right. Um, Alright, I'm warming up apparently next to these brazier things. Fair enough. Oh, hello. I suppose those are the grey beards. They seem a little confused. <laughs> you feel chilly? Minus 37. <sighs> yeah, I'm certainly not talking to anyone until I've stopped shivering. What are they doing? They're just standing there. Are they waiting for me? Well, it's very polite of them if they are, although I kind of wish they'd just, you know, add to the door like normal people. Exposure minus 5. You feel warm. Alright, there we go. That's cool. That's fine. Alright, better go speak to him then. God, look at this place. It's ancient. So, a dragonborn appears at this moment in the turning of the age. You called me Dragonborn. What exactly does that mean? 
Oops, we will see if you truly have the gift. Show us, Dragonborn. Let us taste of your voice. I hate the dialogue thing. You know what? From now on, I'm just going to use the arrow keys for, for dialogue because I'm be fed up of that. Your shout will not harm us. Are you sure? I don't want you to slip and break your hip or something. I'm just saying. I. All right then. All right. All right. Fine. Boost! I cast with the power of your voice. Dragonborn, it is you. Welcome to High Hrothgar. I am Master Angir. I speak for the Greybeards. Now, tell me, Dragonborn, why have you come here? Uh, well, uh... Yeah, I want to find out what it means to be Dragonborn, I suppose. We are here to guide you in that pursuit. Just as the Greybeards have sought to guide those of the Dragonborn that came before you. So I'm not the only Dragonborn, I assume. I thought so, but it's a little confusing and all with the whole shouting business, but well, okay. You are not the first. There have been many of the Dragonblood since Akatosh first bestowed that gift upon mortal kind. Whether you are the only Dragonborn of this age, that is not ours to know. You are the only one that has been revealed thus far. That is all I can say. So, who are you? What, are you, what, what is this place exactly? We are the Greybeards, followers of the Way of the Voice. You stand in High Hrothgar, the slopes of Kinarith's sacred mountain. Here we commune with the voice of the sky strive to achieve balance between our inner and outer selves. Well, I uh, am ready to learn in that case. If that's what you're here to do, teach me. You have shown that you are Dragonborn. You have the inborn gift. But, do you have the discipline and temperament to follow the path laid out for you? That remains to be seen. Without training, you have already taken the first steps towards projecting your voice into a thoom, a shout. Now let us see if you are willing and able to learn. When you shout, you speak in the language of dragons. Thus, your dragon blood gives you an inborn ability to learn words of power. All shouts are made up of three words of power. As you master each word, your shout will become progressively stronger. Master Einarth will now teach you Ro, a second word in unrelenting force. Ro means balance in the dragon tongue. Combine it with Fus, force, to focus your thumb more sharply. Ro. Good grief, what the? What did you just. Oh. Wow. Okay. That's kind of awesome. So that's what the whole absorbing soul business was. Okay, right. So that's what that is. Makes sense now. Use your unrelenting force shout to strike the targets as they appear. Eh, targets? What? Oh, the grief. Okay. Uh. Well. Well done. Again. Oh. Okay. 
Oh, so, sorry about your pottery. I really am. I, I didn't mean to do that. Again? Really? It was twice not enough. Alright, fair enough. God, you know what? This is actually getting quite fun. <laughs> Impressive. Your thumb is precise. You show great promise, Dragon Ball. We will perform your next trial in the courtyard. Follow, Master Boy. Oh, but it's cold outside. I don't, oh, fine. Am I dry yet? Yeah, I am good. It means I can put the cloak back on. <laughs> Take it, your master, Bori. Are you not coming as well? Okay. Here it's within myself. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give come on. I wanna try this out. <laughs> Let's say, I think, uh... Master Wolfgar will demonstrate whirlwind split. Then it will be your turn. I think Claudius is really enjoying this, actually. He has no magical talent of his own, but that's not to say he's never wished he had magical talent. Stand next to me. Master Bori will open the gate. Okay, okay. Use your whirlwind sprint to pass through before the cliff. And that's where I need to actually equip the damn thing before I forget. Whirlwind sprint. Oh, I have slow time as well. I forgot about that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I should uh, unlock that later, but anyway. Oh, I didn't favour it, unrelenting force, apparently. Alright, alright. Whoa! <laughs> wow. Sorry about that, about that, by the way. So, is that it? Can I do it again? Alright, one, two, three. Your quick mastery of a new thune is uh, astonishing. I'd heard the stories of the abilities of Dragonborn, but to see it for myself. I, uh, so I assume it's not this easy for you lot. No, indeed not. But beware that your skill does not outstrip your wisdom. You are now ready for your last trial. Retrieve the horn of Jürgen Windcaller, our founder, from his tomb in the ancient fane of Ustengraf. Remain true to the way of the voice. You will return. Wow. Okay. I'm taken aback by all this, frankly, but, uh, okay. Uh, so... It... <coughs> Excuse me. So what does it mean to be Dragonborn exactly? You're still not really... I don't know. It's not really kind of... answered that in any specific detail. Dragons have the inborn ability to learn and project their voice. Dragons also are able to absorb the power of their slain brethren. A few mortals are born with similar abilities, whether a gift or a curse has been a matter of debate down through the centuries. What you have already learned in a few days took even the most gifted of us years to achieve. Some believe that Dragonborn are sent into the world by the gods at times of great need. 
We will speak more of that later when you are ready. Uh, oh, okay, fair enough. Uh, uh, I think Claudius is being uh, very, very. I'm trying to come, come across in that he's, he's being actually quite respectful towards these guys because uh, what, he's just a little bewildered by it all. Like, uh, all the, uh, all the history that's around him, I suppose, right now. It's a little overwhelming. So, why are shout? yeah, good question, why are shouts in the dragon lang language, then? Dragons have always been able to shout. Language is intrinsic to their very being. There is no difference in the dragon tongue between debating and fighting. Shouting comes as naturally to a dragon as breathing or speaking. In mythic times, when mortal kind was in great need, the goddess Kinnereth granted us the ability to speak as dragons do. Right, that's what the emblem Most said. People, long years of training are required to learn even the simplest shout. But for you, the dragon speech is in your blood. And you learn it almost without effort. Whew. So, uh. So, why are the dragons returning then? Is it, uh, does it have something to do with me? No doubt. The appearance of a dragon born at this time is not an accident. Your destiny is surely bound up with the return of the dragons. Oh boy. You should focus on owning your voice. And soon your path will be made clear. All right, all right. Uh, okay, well, thank you, thank you. I'll continue my training, I, I suppose. Um, hone my voice, you said, isn't it? Hone my voice. So, uh, okay. Good. Then you will be ready for whatever lies ahead. So, uh. Tell me about the Greybeards, then. I know nothing about you, frankly. And uh, no one's really been able to tell me anything useful about you anyway. We study the way of the voice, according to the teachings of our founder, Jürgen Winkler. Very few are permitted to study with us here at High Hofgur. But in your case, Dragonborn, it is a privilege to guide you towards mastery of your voice. So, what is the way of the voice? You keep telling me to be true to it and such. You've not actually <laughs> told me what it is. The voice was a gift of the goddess Kinnereth at the dawn of time. She gave mortals the ability to speak as dragons do. Although this gift has often been misused, the only true use of the voice is for the worship and glory of the gods. True mastery of the voice can only be achieved when your inner spirit is in harmony with your outward actions. In the contemplation of the sky, Kinnereth's domain, and the practice of the voice, we strive to achieve this balance. But, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't presumably follow your philosophy because I don't require constant training and practice, do I? The Dragonborn is an exception to all the rules. The Dragon Blood itself is a gift of the gods. If we accept one gift, how can we deny the other? As Dragonborn, you have received the ability to shout directly from Akatosh. Ooh. We therefore seek to guide you on the proper use of your gift, which transcends the restrictions which bind other mortals. Okay. Ooh. I probably took Claudius aback a little bit there, the mention of Akatosh. Considering it was Akatosh who directly intervened and, you know, ended the Oblivion Crisis and all that. That's all kind of common knowledge and all that. So being told that I have been given this power directly by the god Akatosh, that's a little bit like, whoa, well, I blimey, okay. Just uh, <laughs> hold on a second there while I take that in. Uh, so... Are there any four of you then? Five. Our leader, Potanax, lives alone on the peak of the throat of the world. When your voice can open the path, you will know you are ready to speak to him. 
that's unhelpfully cryptic arm gear, but fine. I guess that's all we can. Oh, hang on a minute. Uh, no, who who was a uh, who was Jurgen Windcaller then? He was a great war leader of the ancient Nords, master of the voice or tongue. After the disaster at Red Mountain, where the Nord army was annihilated, he spent many years pondering the meaning of that terrible defeat. He finally came to realize that the gods had punished the Nords for their arrogant and blasphemous misuse of the voice. He was the first to understand that the voice should be used solely for the glory and worship of the gods, not the glory of men. Jürgen Windcaller's mastery of the voice eventually overcame all opposition, and the way of the voice was born. Doesn't that seem a little contrary to why men were given the ability to shout in the first place, i.e. to fight dragons? Well, okay, I'm not going to question you. Wind. You know more about this than I do. Blimey. So, I'm some kind of ancient Nordic superhero <laughs> who can do that. <laughs> uh, what to make? What to make of this? I. At a loss for words, frankly. At a bit of a loss for words. Oh, well, wow. it's, it's white run. Huh. A loss for words. That's <laughs> pun not intended. But, uh. You know. Me of all people. Me. Ancient Nordic hero, Dragonborn. Granted the ability to shout by Akatosh. This is nuts. This is absolutely nuts. Although it explains a lot, mind you. So, uh. There was another shout that I learned, wasn't there? Yeah. It's hockey there. Huh. Slow motion. Interesting. So I can slow time down and sprint incredibly quickly over short distances. And I've only just got started. <laughs> I think I'm going to have a lot of fun with this. A lot of fun indeed.